hello students welcome you all in a new series of lecture in this today's lecture we are going to study the remaining part of the uh, unit 7 that is human community and the the environment the points which are going to cover in this chapter it is or it are these are environmental movements in this uh, according to the syllabus only three uh, movements are uh, given for your uh, sybsc curriculum that is chitpo movement silent valley and bishnois of rajasthan the next point is uh, environmental ethics that is the role of indian and other religions and cultures in environmental conservation and the last point is environmental communication and public awareness and case studies the cng vehicles in delhi so we'll be, we'll begin with a first topic that is environmental movements okay so what are environmental movements that people who are aware for the environment they are taking initiative to save the environment maybe any factor in this chipko movement or the silent valley it is the forest or plants now the movement that is initiated by the people okay, just to save the environment so the first uh, movement that is a chipko movement as you can observe in the picture the women are uh, hugging the trees okay? that means the local language meaning is chipko that is hug the trees okay so we'll see history about the chipko movement about 300 years ago a rural in rajasthan decided to kill decided to fell khejri trees in his state to create lime so local women led by bishnoi women amrita devi clung to the trees to prevent the felling of the trees that formed the basis of the scarce sources on which they were dependent that means the king or the rural who decided uh, to just cut the khejri plants or the trees to create lime okay it is important for the construction this movement is led by the bishnoi women women that is the leader was amrita devi uh, who initiated this movement uh, that is she started clung the trees with the help of some people just to prevent that falling of the tree felling of the tree and that to prevent cut down that the another aspect which we should take in consideration that the most of the population is living in the forest or they were dependent on these plants for their survival for their so many by products which are produced by the plants that's why these plants are and were very important for these people the women were ruthlessly macerated it is that the rural later realized this mistake the story however has been remembered and was revived in 1970s when severe trees felling for timber in the himalayas prompted local women supported by people such as sundar lal ji bahuguna and chandi prasad sorry chandi prasad bhat led a people's movement to prevent deforestation by timber contractors okay so same like uh, in 1970s in 1970 uh, another movement initiated in the himalaya okay so in the himalaya that movement uh, or the plant cutting or the deforestation was initiated just to get timber okay as we all know that timber is important for the many constructions and furniture okay and to uh, produce many art and craft things okay so the movement inspired by this the first movement that is the uh, initiated 300 years ago by amrita devi okay? and sundar lal ji bahuguna and chandi prasad bhat they initiated this movement that just to prevent deforestation they did the same thing that is initiated chipko movement 
in memory of the event during which women had clung to their trees and given up their lives okay so the actual big chipko movement was initiated by sundarlal ji bahuguna okay? the movement followed by the path of the path of the 300 bishnoi women had taken three country centuries ago in rajasthan okay that we have already studied and by taken inspiration from that the sundarlal ji bahuguna initiated the another chipko movement in the foothills of himalaya those to prevent deforestation you can observe in the picture that women clung or they have hugged the trees but that this had led to serious flood and loss of precious soil okay? chipko activists have made long padayatras across the himalayas protesting against protesting against deforestation so uh the so little bit part of the forest or the himalaya foothill okay they have started the government or the contractor has started the uh, deforestation okay now what is the result they have seen that is floods in uh, serious floods in the human habitation and the loss of precious soil, soil that is the soil erosion okay? as we know the roots are holding this soil particles that's why the deforestation leads to floods and precious soil now what beside hugging the trees or uh, clinging the trees what are the things in this chipko movement was done that is long padayatra across the himalayas so by protesting and by doing chipko movement okay they make a big initiative uh, they have change they may try to made change in a society okay so the movement has been highly successful and they may been primarily supported by empowering local women's group who are the most seriously affected segment of society of society by deforestation okay so this is one of the successful movement the movement has proved to the world that the forest of the hills are the life support system of local communities of immense value in terms of local produce that is essential for the survival of local people and the forest has less quantifiable uh, but even more important ecological service such as soil conservation and maintenance of the natural water regime of the whole region okay so it is not only uh, because to get a hype or just to pressurize the government but what is the significance of this movements first thing is the local people are dependent on that uh, plants or we can say vegetation to get by products some people or the tribal uh, people are living in the forest only okay so it is a natural habitat for them along with that the the plants as we know so many uh, biotic factors are dependent on the plants many insects birds reptiles likewise it is a ecosystem so it is very important to say this is a, a one of the factor in the ecosystem because as we know if we remove any factor from the ecosystem the whole ecosystem will collapse or then we'll see the adverse effect on the next uh, trophic level of the ecosystem so that's why it is very important to maintain the ecological balance along that is the ecological service which are getting we are getting from the plants okay along with that the second thing is soil conservation as we know through the open cycle that means the when whenever twin or any uh, dead leaves they are falling on the uh, soil surface as we know the microbes are present on in the soil okay these are called as the decomposers they are decomposing this uh, material or the this organic material which are more complex they convert it into simpler form that means the one of the derivative of nitrogen okay so they convert it in a such a way that through the soil plant roots can take up that nitrogen derivative 
बिकॉज प्लांट्स आर नॉट एबल टू टेक नाइट्रोजन विच इज रेडिली अवेलेबल इन द एयर ओके सो दे हैव टू कन्वर्ट दिस नाइट्रोजन इन टू वन ऑफ द डिफरेंट फॉर्म एंड देन ओनली दे कैन अपटेक और यूज दट नाइट्रोजनस कंपाउंड फॉर्म सो डीकम्पोजर्स आर डीकम्पोजिंग और दे कन्वर्टिंग दिस नाइट्रोजनस मटेरियल और द नाइट्रोजन कंपाउंड इन टू अ different form or the simpler form then only plant can uptake again plant can use that nitrogen can produce different flowers fruits and seen that when after some time the twig or the branch or the plant uh, leaves are falling on the ground again decomposers are decomposing that nitrogenous material into a simpler form likewise this is a closed cycle okay this is run by the plants and microbes in this process or in this decomposing process the various nutrients are produced and these are making soil enrich okay because as we know npk these are the basic components which are present in any fertile soil so likewise the nutrient balance balance of the any soil is maintained indirectly ph is maintained and the soil is getting conserved okay that texture or the quality of the soil will remain as it is or it may become enriched okay? so the water holding capacity also increased okay and the soil become fertile so there is whole things are very important for the ecological balance okay. the ability of the local local uh, women to band themselves together in the foothills of the himalayas goes back to the pre independence days when women such as meera ben a disciple of gandhi ji moved this moved to this region and understood that it was a deforestation that led to floods and devastation of villages in the valleys and in a uh, that is gangetic plains below okay so as we know that <coughs> the protests which were done by the meera ben okay in the ganga plain okay so that was a uh, one of the initiative or the uh, one of the famous movement they also appreciated that substitutions of oak and other uh, broad leaf forest of the himalayas by planting fast growing pine for timber and resins was an ecological and social disaster which reduced the forest resources by traditional hill communities so they have shifted to another uh, substitute or the option to prevent the cutting of the oak trees or any many trees who are older and which are valuable for the furniture instead of that they have started planting fast growing pine for the timber okay? and even the resins so conservation movement against felling on the trees and for maintaining the ecological balance okay that is the actual chipko movement the sundarilal bahuguna you can observe in the picture the man who initiated Uh, the chipko movement which was inspired by the uh, movement of the bishnois okay and the lady who started this it is amrita devi okay so started uh, by sundar lal bahuguna in 1973 in the foothills of himalaya non violent social and ecological movement that was led by rural people and especially women so the key factor which you should remember it is it is a non violent and social and ecological movement okay so people protected trees by hugging them to prevent them from being hacked okay or cut now another movement is in a silent valley okay the silent valley movement was a movement against the state to protect silent valley an evergreen tropical forest in palakkad district of kerala india it was started in 1973 to save the silent valley reserve forest 
from being flooded by hydroelectric project okay so you can see in the picture that is it is also called why it is called as a silent valley because even in the british era okay, the region was very silent and it is a ma major habitat for the wildlife animals even for the many many species you can it is enriched with the different species that is the biodiversity of this region is very high okay so because of the calmness or the silent or the very low level of noise is there that's why it is called as a silent valley okay so it was initiated in 1973 and why it is initiated that the government started or they have initiated or they decided that build a hydroelectric project in the silent valley now this project is uh, initiated by or the actually proposed by the britishers okay and then it was regulated or it was uh, come into uh, consideration by the government after that after that the government also started working on that and the local people has taken an initiative just to <coughs> uh, against that or to work against that to maintain the environment so british named the era silent valley because the perceived absence of noisy cicadas okay so when the whenever the cicadas are absent in a particular area okay they are uh, the called as the silent valley the kunti puja is a major or the kunti puja is a major river flows 15 km southwest from silent valley okay it takes its origin in the lush green forest of silent valley in 1928 the location on the kunti puja river at uh, sirandari was identified as an uh, ideal site for the electric electricity generation okay why this was the uh, hot spot or the ideal site for the electricity generation plant or the electricity power plant because there is a river site initially the decision was made by british government to build a dam across the river which originates from the forest in 1958 a study and a survey of the area was conducted and the hydroelectric project was proposed by the kerala state electricity board okay so uh, in 1958 the survey was done or conducted and they projected the electricity uh, sorry kerala state electricity board conducted or they have started or uh, proposed that will build this hydroelectricity for project okay at the silent valley the plans for the hydroelectric project that threatened the park's high diversity of the wildlife stimulated an environmentalist social environment social movement in 1970s called save silent valley which resulted in a cancellation of the project okay so by taking survey or by uh, in in uh, initiating social movement they have uh, in the ne sorry by initiating the uh, save silent valley uh, movement okay they cancel this project by pressurizing the government now what is the what are the significance or the what is the significance of silent valley the valley is famous for many rare species of birds and mammals bird life international listed 16 species in silent valley as threatened or restricted so as we know that who are threatened species those who are about to extinct okay and they are uh, in a threat to extinct sorry they are threat to vanish okay so first they are threatened then become uh, let's say the vulnerable and extinct so mammals in the valley like boar the largest all wild cattle there are at least 34 species of mammals at silver valley including the threatened species of mammals over 128 species of butterflies and 400 species of moths live here okay so you can observe 
that or by knowing the value you can uh, interpret that how many biodiversity is there 128 species of butterfly at a one place and 400 species of moth at a one place it is a quite big thing so silent valley is identified as a region with high biodiversity and an important gene pool resource for recombinant dna innovation by the indian council of agricultural research icar okay so it is important to study gene pool and recombinant dna technique why what is the gene pool this total number of gene is transferred into transferred or transmitted into a next generation okay that is called as a gene pool now why it is important to study this gene pool okay so generation per generation these genes are getting transferred into a new organism or the descendants okay to study if there is any kind of variation in the descendants or the new species or the new generation of particular species whether there is any kind of mutation that means any change in the gene pool or the genes along with that you can link between the two uh, link between two animals by evolutionary perspectives whether their morphology or the physical structure is same whether their uh, genes are same likewise the different predictions or the different types of studies can be done on wildlife animals okay now what about the movement the movement was initiated by local people and subsequently taken over by the kerala state shastriya sorry sahitya parishad that is kssp the kssp effectively aroused public opinion by publishing a technonomic and socio political assessment report on the silent valley hydroelectric project the kssp generated public opinion against the project as a consequence in 1979 the government of kerala passed legislation regarding the silent valley protection area protection of ecological balance act in 1979 and issued a notification declaring the exclusion of the hydroelectric project area from the proposed national park so to uh, ensure in the future also there should not be a proposal of any kind of project or any other project or any other private organization also should not invade that area they declare that park park or that area as a national park okay so conservation status of silent valley in 1914 the forest of silent valley area was declared a forest reserve forest however 1927 and 1976 proposals uh, sorry portions of silent valley forest areas were subjected to forest operations in 1983 the central government restrict instructed the state government to abandon the project and on 15 november 15 the silent valley forest were declared as a national park on september 7 1985 the silent valley national park was formally inaugurated on september 1 1986 silent valley national park was designated as the core area of nilgiri biosphere reserve and as we know whenever it is declared as a national park there is a biosphere reserve there is buffer zone or the core zone and only some kind of activities are allowed in the buffer zone not in the core zone okay and that's how this area is protected the another movement is bishnois of rajasthan so bishnoi movement was started approximately 290 years ago in the early part of the 18th century in the rajasthan by bishnoi community a large group of them from 84 villages led by lady amrita devi uh led by the led uh, lady amrita devi aid Uh, laid down their lives in an effort to protect the trees from being 
fell on the orders to of maharaja king of jodhpur okay so the former movement or the initial movement was initiated by the amrita devi in the jodhpur okay so bishnoi movement is one of the first organized uh, proponents of the eco conservation wildlife protection and green living the bishnois are considered the first environmentalist of india they are born nature lover because they were their habitat is nearby that area only in the history of environmental movements this was the movement that for the first time used the strategy of hugging and embracing trees for the protection the famous amrita devis movement is considered to be among the pioneering efforts for the environmental protection king abhay singh of jodhpur in 1970s when building his new palace ordered his soldiers to cut the trees for the wood in khejerli uh, sorry khejerli village okay as a symbol of the protest amrita devi stood against the soldiers and fought for the life of the trees by clinging on to them her three daughters asu ratni and bagu also stood by their mother supporting them the other people of this community also stood up for the trees and wrapped their arms around the trunks that's why they that's how they hugged the trees the soldier continued to ex the trees down without paying heed uh, heed to the request to the people the prime reason behind opposing tree cutting was embedded in the cultural belief in the bishnoi community as described in the principles of this uh their sect or their uh, we can say rules advocating the protection of trees and wildlife conservation another reason was initiated by uh, sorry immediately related to their rural livelihood as they dependent on the forest for the supply of fuel wood and fodder so that means we can say their habitat is forest also so bishnoi is from khejerli and other villages villages come to join this agitation and hug the khejri trees one on the uh, one by one to protect trees being cut at the cost of their head in this movement 363 bishnoi is laid down their lives for the protection of khejerli tree trees in the khejerli village of rajasthan this movement has left an indelible sorry indelible mark on the memories and long lasting effects on the psyche of the people now what was the objectives of bishnoi movements conservation of biodiversity to ensure eco friendly social life for the community promoting personal hygiene to ensure healthy life advocacy against cutting the trees preservation of biodiversity and animal husbandry so in the picture you can observe that the prominent leader of this movement is amrita devi aim of the project or the movement was to protect the trees from being felled on the order uh, of the maharaja king uh, of the jodhpur to build new palace okay so uh, as you can in the see picture okay that in this movement uh, the three daughters of amrita devi got killed or they they were sacrificed their lives just to save three uh, trees okay now what is the success of bishnoi movement the after this incidents the maharaja gave a strong royal uh, decree preventing the cutting of trees in all bishnoi village the concept of tree hugging and tree huggers has root in the history of bishnoism in the year of 1970 ad this movement and sacrifice not only inspired the chipko movement in 20th century which was led by sundar lal ji bahuguna but also the government of india in the form of the amrita devi bishnoi wildlife protection award and the government of rajasthan in the form of amrita devi bishnoi smriti paryavaran uh, award okay for contributing the protection of wildlife and environment conservation protection Uh, in the protection or respective okay so uh, that was the success or the uh, you can say till 
Shipko movement, okay, which was initiated by this Amrita Devi. And the first that movement the initiated by Amrita Devi is Vishnuis of Rajasthan. That movement is called as a because the Vishnu people who have started this movement. Okay. So this was about the environmental movements which are run by or initiated by the people, the Chivko, Silent Valley and Vishnuis of Rajasthan.